This is the News Beats on NTBN. I am Chijoke Akafu, and you're welcome. President Mohamed Bouhari has said the deregulations of PMS will bring down the prices of petrol as it will allow a competitive market for the product which will lead to significant reduction in the price and availability of the product at all times. Bouhari said these at this year's first ministerial performance review retreat for ministers, permanent secretaries and top government functionaries in Abuja. The president assured Nigerians of the government's commitment of their role through PPPRA by remaining responsible to ensure that marketers do not exploit citizens by raising pump price arbitrarily. Also ensuring price range is not exceeded by marketers as laid down by the agency. The president says though the deregulation of petrol is causing hardship across the polity, the initial pain will eventually give way to greater benefits as government continues to seek ways and means of cushioning pains, especially for the most vulnerable. President Muhammad Buhari has also strongly warned that with the enormous socio-economic and security challenges confronting West Africa, the sub-region cannot afford another political crisis in the guise of tenure and engagement. This was while addressing the 57th extraordinary session of the Authority of ECOWAS, Heads of State and Government in Niamey, the Republic of Niger. The President is also worried over the premature adoption of ECO, a single currency by French-speaking West African countries, stressing the need for them to return to a grid roadmap as foreign interference may be in the interest of the sub-region. The Nigeria Customs Service has distanced itself from a purported memo alerting officers about terrorists around the federal capital territory. Speaking with NCBN correspondent, spokesman of the service, Deputy Controller Joseph Atta, said the memo was not from the service. He added that a sensitive information that borders on national security like this could not have been communicated in this manner by the service. The spokesman said even though it's not the first time to see fake publications and adverts of auction sales, recruitment with NCS logo on the paper, this calls for deeper investigation. He advised citizens to be wary of what they see circulating on social media as some could just be there to cause unnecessary panic, patronage or other selfish interests. In the meantime, the defense headquarters has assured Nigerians of security as security agencies are already engaged on covert and overt operations to ensure continuous safety of lives and property in the country. And in Borno State, the Borno State Police Command has placed a ban on protest in the state over the hike in petroleum price and new electricity tariffs. The ban on protest in the state was announced in a statement titled, No protest will be tolerated in Borno State and signed by the Police Public Relations Officer of the Borno State Command, Edit Okun, on Monday. The Public Relations Officer said the attention of the command was drawn to an alleged planned protest by an organized labor group against hike in fuel price and electricity prices by the federal government as well as working conditions of the state civil servants and NPOWER beneficiaries. Okon stated that no form of protest will be allowed by the state command as it may sabotage efforts of the federal and state government and that of the security agencies towards ensuring that the emerging peace and security in the state is sustained. Commanders of the 97 police mobile force squadrons across the country have been charged to display a high degree of professionalism, neutrality and embrace a citizen-friendly approach to policing in the forthcoming governorship elections in Edo and Ondo states. The Inspector General of Police, Mohammed Adamu, gave the charge at the meeting with squadron commanders to discuss the prevailing security concerns in the country. Adamu reassured citizens of the readiness of the Nigeria police to work hand in hand with other security agencies and the Independent National Electoral Commission to maintain security during the Edo and Ondo elections. He further called on citizens and especially politicians to be law abiding as no political ambition of an individual was more critical than the common good of all. 
The Minister of Interior, Rauf Aregbeshola, has charged management and staff of the ministry to remain focused and also develop personal value for excellence and efficient service delivery, particularly in the realization of the ministry's mandate. The minister met the call today when he flagged over the 2020 staff training exercise in Madaraba, Karu, local government area of Nasarawa State. Represented by the permanent secretary in the ministry, Jijina Ehuria, Arag Bashala said that the present administration was poised towards lifting the service to a world-class status through the imbuement of modern work practices and processes such as skills acquisition by civil servants in ICT digital model, particularly in the post-COVID-19 era, where public op operation may likely move from the normal hard copy to computer-based. According to him, the civil service was a place for self-development and therefore workers must learn to set high targets for themselves through development of self-excellence, which is a compulsory hallmark that will stand them out for success in their career. In Bialsa State now, the state government and Nigeria Maritime Administration and Safety Agency, NEMASA, yesterday said that they have commenced preparations for the construction of a 116 trillion naira, about 3 billion US dollars deep seaport in the Agi area of the state. While on a visit to the NEMASA headquarters in Lagos, Governor Duye Diri of Bielsa State said that the state was currently co collaborating with relevant federal agencies to see the port project to fruition. He also disclosed that the government was in discussion with potential private investors until the lockdown caused by COVID-19. As things ease up globally, talks will resume. He said Bielsa State is already in lockdown with some private investors as they are also working with relevant federal agencies like NIMASA and the Nigeria Ports Authority, NPA. NIMASA's Director General, Dr. Bashir Jamo, said that the project can only work through a PPP proposal, adding that the government of Bielsa State must also have some level of equity participation. The chairman of the Joint Health Sector Unit, Mr. Bayobelo Moye Josiah, has disclosed the plan of the union to embark on a seven-day warning strike if the federal government fails to meet the union's outstanding demand on or before the midnight of September 13th. According to him, Johesu is forced to draw attention to the deliberate shortchanging of their members in the payment of COVID-19 inducement allowances. He further explains that the Federal Ministry of Health ought to redress and supervise the adherence to the payment of 40 or 50 percent COVID-19 special inducement and hazard allowance as appropriate to all health workers in isolation centers and other related health facilities. The proposed nationwide warning strike is set to be commenced on Monday, the 14th of September, 2020. The senior advocate of Nigeria, Femi Falana, has requested the judicial panel investigating Ibrahim Magu not to act on misleading evidence. The panel, which is headed by retired president of the appeal court, Ayo Salami, is investigating Magu on allegations of corruption and abuse of power. The EFCC boss is the subject matter in the ongoing investigation and his lawyers have urged the panel to investigate verify as well as review the audit of recovered assets. In line with this, they also requested the panel to further investigate non-compliance of official directives allegedly committed by Magu. Based on this, they highlighted the need for Magu to participate in the proceedings as he is entitled. This will also bring an opportunity to cross-examine all witnesses. And now to entertainment news, Nollywood actor and veteran Yul Adoche has blamed British colonizers for the current travails of Nigeria as a country. Yo said this in a tweet which served as a response to actress Uche Jumbo's question of who cursed Nigeria, evident that the country was structured to never work. Yo stated that the aim of such structuralization is for Nigerians to keep misunderstanding and fighting each other, making little progress and depending on their colonizers for everything. And singer Tayana Tello and her husband, Ayman Shimpret, are parents again. The couple welcomed a newborn baby girl named Rio Rose. Rio arrived hours after Tiana's baby shower. 
The baby shower held on Saturday night, September 5th, and had celebrities in attendance. Tiana gave birth on Sunday morning, September the 6th. Announcing the news of his baby's birth, Ayman Shumpert wrote, and I quote, at 3.28 a.m. on September 6, 2020, Ray Rose decided that the baby shower thrown for her, for her and her mommy was too late. She didn't make the party, but she managed to make the next day her best date. He added that his two daughters were delivered in a bathroom without the assistance of a hospital. And finally, adding, welcome, baby girl, we love you. End of quote. And to sports news now, as part of efforts to develop beach soccer in Nigeria and Africa, the President African Beach Soccer Union, Mahmoud Hadejia, has paid a courtesy visit to the Nigeria Football Federation at Moshud Abiola National Stadium, Abuja. Hadejia, while addressing sports journalists at the Sunday Dakoro House, head office of Nigeria's football rolling body, said Absu is prepared to pull all the levers as they hope to promote beach soccer across the continent. The president of the union stressed that beach soccer development is not profound in Africa as compared to other continents, hence the need to spread the tentacles of the sport to remote locations in Nigeria and other African countries. Meanwhile, the Federal Capital Territory Football Association Chairman Mukhtar Mohammed has advocated for the adoption of more grass football pitches in the country, just as he commended pressmen for helping to bring adequate attention to the once forgotten football pitch of the Mushud Abiola National Stadium. On the visit of officials of African Beach Soccer Union to his office, Mokhtar said his association is prepared to work with APSU to develop beach soccer in Abuja while noting the ready availability of facilities and little difficulty in maintaining them. Time now for the weather forecast and Jordan Atairo has that packaged for us. Welcome to the weather reports for Wednesday the 9th of September 2020 across some parts of Nigeria and some parts of Africa on NCBN. Temperatures will drop generally tomorrow with Abuja and Kano experiencing 20 degrees Celsius, a slight drop as compared to today. And there will be an average of 21 degrees Celsius across 11 states with Ibadan, Ushubu, Katsina, Gusau, Ilorin, Lokoja, Kalaba, Makodi, Enugu, Mina and Nasara all expected to experience 21 degrees Celsius. Umwahia, Abeokuta, Potakat, Uyo, Oweri, Onicha, Jalingo, Sokoto, Birning, Kebi, Meiduguri, Yanagua, Yola, Jigawa should expect a temperature of 22 degrees Celsius. Gombe and Asaba will be a bit warm at 23 degrees Celsius. Kaduna and Bauchi will experience 19 degrees Celsius and the lowest temperature will be experienced in Lagos at 16 degrees Celsius. And to some other parts of Africa, Cape Town will experience 15 degrees Celsius, Kampala 17 degrees Celsius, Yaoundé 20 degrees Celsius, Accra 24 degrees Celsius and Dakar 25 degrees Celsius. Well, this is where we draw the curtains on news beats. Do well to follow us on all our social media handles. My name is Chijoki Okafo. Many thanks for watching. We will see you again. Goodbye for now.